like orange box orange, but maybe that's a bit of a stretch. So, hi, my name is Becky, and my talk today is entitled, And This Is What The Point Is, uh, Tales From The Frontier Of Video Game Outreach. And this is my second talk at Video Brains, and it's kind of fitting, because the first time I came, I did quite a businessy talk. I talked a lot about um, problems and about how we fix them and about parents and about communication. You can probably find it online. It wasn't very good. I had quite a traumatic time, so I feel for you because this time I get a stage, whereas last time I had to come and present in high heels because I am a short ass, And I'd managed to drop an oven on my ankle and trying to present in high heels with basically no ankle is really quite fun. It was all very manic. I was very manic and it just, it was quite stressful. So I thought that for this time, we just kind of chill out a little bit and I'm going to tell you some short stories. So we're going to have story time, okay? Um, do I get a clicker? Just, is that a clicker? <laughs> cool. So I'm going to tell you some stories about games, about what games can do and about what games can be. So these stories are going to be a mix of things I've researched, a mixture of things I've found, a mixture of things I've discovered by talking to parents at festivals and events. And these stories have a kind of common theme. How does my clicky button work? Which button do I press? Any button? <laughs> Forwards. This one? Whoop. Ta-da! So these are the kind of stories that I tell parents when they ask me, so what's the point of playing video games? And it's normally quite a kind of aggressive question, right? <laughs> These stupid, mindless, beepy-boopy video games, what's the bloody point of them? Do they have any purpose? Why won't you go outside? You tell me. You, there. You tell me, now. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Game Hub. <laughs> <laughs> so, these are the stories that I tell them, and this is what I say. I say, this is what the point is. And so, it's story time. <laughs> it's one of my favorite pictures, and I just want to see him more in my life <laughs> now. So, okay, so, <laughs> so yeah, there's no great structures to this, but roughly story one. Uh, so Game Hub is essentially an outreach project. We go and talk to parents and try to help them understand games so they're a bit less terrified and a bit less likely to write to the Daily Mail about problems that they have. So I take it on the road a lot. Um, one of our big things is that we're a partner for the Norwich Gaming Festival. If any of you have been, give me a cheer. If you haven't been, give me a cheer. Just generally give me a cheer. Woo! It's a good thing. You should go. And I run a stand there all week, or have done in the past anyway. And I kept seeing a kid there when I was there last year. And he keeps coming back every single day from the start of the festival right the way through to the end of the festival every day. And he's on his own, and he's really shy. And just by the way he's moving around, just by the way that he's interacting th with things that to you and me are kind of ordinary and not that interesting, but he just finds them fascinating. And I find myself wondering, just wondering, is this kid a refugee? His clothes are brand new. He jumps at loud noises. He's got no friends or family with him. And like I say, he comes back every single day. It's clear he can't read the signs. He doesn't talk to anyone. He doesn't understand the things that are said to him. And in between playing the games in the festival, he just sits on a wall and just looks. He's not carrying anything. He's not carrying a bag, a wallet, nothing. A phone? No. And, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm extrapolating here. But I wonder, I wonder if he's a refugee or something's going on there. But he loves the games. And over the course of the week, I watch him go from just sitting for hours, just looking at things, to actually starting to play, starting to interact, starting to try and join in with the festival. He starts to play with the other kids. He can't talk to them, that much is clear but he's able to start to interact. There's nobody encouraging him, oh, go make friends. There's no adult pushing him forward to try and develop him. But through the games, he starts to interact with kids his own age. And so games can help us forge connections with one another. I tell parents a second story, a shorter story, about Keith Stewart's book. Some of you may be familiar with it. It's called A Boy Made of Blocks. It's a novel, it's based on a true story about Keith's own son. It's about autism, it's about learning to communicate. It's about learning lots of things, not just the kid himself. 
I tell them another story. I tell them about Jackie and her boys. Stepbrothers. And oh boy, did they hate each other. They really hated each other. The fist fights got so bad between Jackie's two boys when she came to talk to me. There was more than one trip to A&E. More than one. And these two big, burly, fuck-off teenage boys are literally trying to kill each other. And then one day, someone brought them a copy of FIFA. And they bonded over FIFA. <coughs> and she came to see me because they wanted to start their own streaming YouTube channel together. And that was FIFA. Whether or not they started the channel or not, I don't know. But I like the story. I tell them about some of my friends, maybe friends that you have too, who, you know, find it difficult to leave the house for one reason or another, maybe through illness or disability, for whatever reason, for whom games is their social lifeline, where they can interact with other people and be treated as an equal. They are a person, they are a player, they are more than their illness. And what I want to leave you with today, if I've got the right card, which I might not have, which I do. Oh, okay. Non sequitur. Fine. I'm just bad at writing presentations. It's okay. <laughs> so what I want to leave you with today, talking about games, about families, about how families talk about games, that maybe what's on the screen isn't really the most important thing. Maybe a game can be a crutch. Maybe a game can be an enabler a facilitator to help players have a deeper and more meaningful interaction with one another or with themselves. Games allow us to bond through recognition of mastery, shared trial by digital adversary, offer ways to be combative without violence, offer ways to learn to communicate, to share in an experience, to reflect on our own selves when things get tough and think about how we think about others to empathize, to sympathize, to explore, or just to escape for a little bit. And so when I speak to parents about games, to try to get them to understand games in a more holistic way. You don't play Halo because you like shooting things in the face, any more than you play Monopoly because you've always harbored this secret desire to be an estate agent. You play games and they're more than just the mechanics. They're more than just the theme. They're more than just the way that, present, that theme is presented. It's all of those things together and the human element, the player. So let's roll back a bit. What is the point of games? It is just more than the lights and the sounds from the screen. The point of a game is to make interesting, memorable, challenging, cerebral, social, thoughtful experiences for the player. Things for the player to do. To create experiences, to create memories, to create moments of wonder, of joy, of fascination, of challenge, of reflection that stick with you, that shape you, that make you see things differently, that make you empathize with somebody you've never met, that make you want to tell your friends, that make you make new friends. And so when parents ask me, what is the point of video games? I tell them games are experiences that we can share. And that's what the point of games is.